Hi guys, how's it going? I'm back with another video to show you something else that I've done with my FPS game to make things a bit more streamlined and hopefully speed up development in the future. One of the things I knew early on in my game was that I wanted it to be easy for me to add weapons to my game. I didn't know, and I still don't know, how the final product will look, so I wanted to be able to swap in and out of weapons easily without having to worry about rewriting the code base every time. So it was off to reset research classes in Godot and how I can leverage this feature to make swapping guns as easy as changing the mesh. What is a class? A class is an extensible blueprint for creating objects, providing initial values for state and implementations of behavior. In Godot, it's really easy to create your own class. By default, all scripts that you create in Godot are themselves classes. So all you need to do is replace the extends and write the relative path to the script where it would normally be something like spatial or kinematic 2D. The term extends in Godot defines inheritance, so you get access to whatever base script is defined here. And then you'll have the functionality of that script in your new one. Or the other thing you can do is right after the inheritance, you can define the class name and even an icon. That will allow your class to be visible in the editor. And when you do make a new script that needs to inherit from that base class, you can simply write extends and the name of that class. So in my case, it extends gun. Or you can even add that element from the editor itself. The reason for this, in my case, is that all guns or weapons, I could consider abstracting this further, uh, will have uh, common elements. There is a number of signals that they will all need to emit and a number of variables that they'll all have in common. For example, how much ammo does the gun have? What's the maximum capacity? What kind of weapon is it? As I stated in my last video, I'm only allowing the player to hold a set number of weapons. And how can I identify it in code? That's what the UID is. So all of the guns have these variables in common. And all I need to do when I'm making a new weapon is define these variables. Notice that these variables don't have default values, so when you make a new gun you need to define what they are in the editor. Then after that we need to look at the main functions of the class. These are the action functions, as I'm calling them. These are the virtual functions of the gun class and will need to be overwritten when creating a new gun. They can be called in any way you want, but I've designed them with player input in mind, obviously. One of the most powerful reasons for this, at least in my experience, is that not all the guns need to have these inputs in place. Uh, for example, a pistol probably doesn't need a secondary mode, although it could have one. Uh, so I can just simply not override that, and the gun will still work as normal, even if the player presses the button. Another really good reason why I wanted to turn my weapons into a class is as it stands right now, almost all of the player input is happening on the player script. I want to keep it this way for now. The movement is broken up into node states, but everything, mouse and interaction, is on the player. And it works well. It has access to all the other items in the scene, and with the current hierarchy, giving each gun access to them would be kind of annoying and prone to bugs. This way, I can simply make one call on the player, pass the parameters that I need, and get a consistent response every time. I let the character script worry about input and interaction, and I pass on whatever is necessary to the gun. I've done this in the hopes of a cleaner approach, but the character script is starting to get cluttered, so I may look at other options for cleaning this up in the future. Hopefully this will lead me to having an easier time when it comes to adding real content to my game. When I add more weapons than the three I have right now. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun to give a live uh, demonstration of my gun class and just make a gun. I've got a new model from Loaf BRR on itch, or as I'm calling it, Loaf Brrr. Um, and he's got this revolver here. It looks really nice um, and it's got all the animations and even better It's under creative common attribution. So loaf. This is your attribution So the first thing we want to do is create a new scene and we're just gonna go other node. We're not gonna choose gun We're gonna just go with rigid body and um, in this we're gonna add a script uh, And we're going to save it 
weapon, secondary revolver, and we'll just call this one revolver. Create, and then up here we're just gonna extend gun. Z gun. Then we'll save the scene. Under revolver, we'll call it revolver main, just because there's a lot of other scenes in here with revolver. It's asking us for obviously the collision shape, but we'll get to that in a second. So we'll come down to scenes. I've got that here. Revolver, just regular revolver. All right, so this is it. Um, first thing I know that I need to do is I need to rotate this on to be facing negative Z, because that's the way the camera is facing. Um, and we'll need to add a collision shape and give it a box shape. Uh, we'll just make this uh, approximately the size of the gun. We'll just put a box over it. That's fine for now, we don't need too much. As long as it doesn't fall through the earth, we're all good. Um, the other thing we need to do is change the collision layer and take it off the world. Otherwise, that's going to cause problems for our player. I'll just rename this Revolver. Revolver. Okay, and I've got my weapon all in a single node because there's just stacks of them in the scene. I'll bring in Revolver Main and I'll have to connect a pickup area to it as well, otherwise we won't be able to grab it. And we'll just move that a little bit back from the player, hit play, and we should be able to pick that up. Uh, no questions asked, no bugs. It won't do anything, but it will just not crash the game as well, which is great. And that's correct. So we can pick it up. We could swap it if we wanted to. Okay, let's get back to it. Now we've got all these parameters that I pointed out before. We've got the UID. And I'll just call that revolver. It is a secondary weapon. Uh, we're going to go with a traditional 6 for, for current ammo. We'll make it 12 for the current capacity. The amount that a magazine will pick up is 6. And the max ammo uh, will make that 24. I think will be good. And for some reason that decided to be number one. Maybe we can even add six so that we can just really send home that idea and just, just increment these up. So All right, that should be fine. So what else do we need? Um, well, we don't really need too much else. I'll just make this editable and I'll make it local too so that we can sort of take control of it. Um, and then we'll just jump in and we can start sort of writing the code and working with the animation. So I'm just going to delete all of this stuff. I don't think I need the processing delta. So obviously we're going to need to get access to our animation player down here. So on ready var nim player equals dollar sign animation player from the revolver. Um, oh, we need a bullet point. All of them have it. We'll need to add that to point 3D that I normally, a position 3D, excuse me, that I normally put on all of these at the end to help with the ray cast. Bullet point, and we'll get access to that. Bullet point, goodness, bullet point. Okay. All right, so we'll also add a timer while we're here and we'll just call this uh, bullet or trigger timeout or something like that. Okay, let's just get access to that as well. Timeout and we'll get that and it will be the trigger timeout. Okay, not confusing at all. Let's just rename that to trigger timeout. We'll also need a variable to control the shooting because I know for a fact on this that the input for the fire is just uh, when it's being pressed, not if it's just been pressed. So you can continuously fire, obviously, with the uh, rifles. So um, I'll just create a shooting variable and it will be false for now. Um, and then we'll also need a bullet duration to keep track of how many shots we've taken. Uh, so that we can control the spray and we'll just specify this as an int We might as well do that with this one too just for consistency. Okay I'll just delete it 
and then we're going to one two we're going to put in the first virtual function which is the primary fire so this takes a camera raycast which is the raycast from the camera and the speed that we're traveling at um, which will influence the spray so the first thing we want to check obviously is if the animation player dot is playing um, or shooting uh, we just want to return because we don't want to fire that's it else if current ammo uh, if that's equal to zero then we just want to call reload but if it's not then we can shoot and what is the name of the animation for shooting it is shoot so what should I say so I'm noticing that the the animation for this is 2.5 seconds and you could potentially just use this to control the reload um, but that's going to take a little bit too long so I'm just going to set this to 0.4 so we'll get the first shot um, 0.4 excuse me and then that way we'll just we'll play one and that will be fine for now just for demonstration purposes I'll delete that animation play shoot and um, we're gonna increment our bullet duration and then we'll call spray S spray and that takes the bullet duration and the speed at which we are traveling and then we'll just need to emit that signal as well so that the um, players camera will shake so this is called spray calc and we will include the spray calculation okay uh, we don't have any sounds to play so we can't do that either um, we will reduce the bullets by one and um, we will calculate the collision and we'll pass in the camera raycast and we'll pass in the bullet point alrighty what else what else shooting can be set to true And then we've got the second virtual function that we can overwrite, which is pretty easy because we can just say that um, when the trigger, when the primary fire button is released, we can set shooting to false. And we can also emit the signal reset spray. There it is, that's cool. Um, and then we'll also start the timer for our trigger timeout. And then while I'm here, one second, that's probably fine, I don't know. When that's timed out, I'm also going to uh, set the bullet duration to zero. Uh, this is necessary because if we just set it to zero when we release the fire button, basically the, the spray calculation would be useless for a pistol. Um, which, you know, like you could just do, uh, but I want to have a little bit, so. After one second, that'll reset. Um, okay, so we're well on our way. Now we just have to worry about the reload. So that's the, another virtual function. I'm just gonna paste that in. Um, so if the animation player is playing, uh, we just wanna return out. Um, since we don't want to start the reload before anything else is happening. So for example, we're shooting and we're spamming the trigger button, something like that. Um, otherwise, else, okay, so if, if the animation player is playing, we want to return out, obviously, because we don't want to reload while we're doing anything else. Otherwise, we're going to check if we've got capacity in, in our weapon. Um, so if that's greater than zero, um, we can play play reload and we're also going to call update capacity which will take some of our capacity and add it to our current ammo else we don't have any ammo um, we're going to play um, I haven't really watched these but I am going to play open cylinder 
and we'll go with that. And that's just about it. We don't have any sound, um, so there's nothing to add to there, but this should just give us the functionality that we expect to have in this. Um, let's see if I've forgotten anything. Okie dokie, uh, there's our floating gun. Okay, well, it definitely, um, definitely shoots, it creates holes, no sound, which is kind of like a bummer. And it's, yeah, it's updating the hits, so we should be able to get rid of this. Yep, okay. Awesome, and what does the shake look like? It's a little bit. <laughs> I don't know about that ammo. Um, I might I might have to change the animation, but otherwise, probably this one might look good. Nice. Okay. Cool. Not having any uh, sound is kind of like uh, really um, bummed me out. So I'm gonna quickly go into free sounds and find uh, a revolver. Um, and we're gonna make it Creative Commons zero. Okay, and we've found a pretty good contender. Sounds okay. We might need to edit it a bit later on, but we'll roll with this for now. Um, I'm going to bring it in. And how long is it? It's a two second sound clip and our gun It is only a 0.4 second shot. So we're going to need to cut that down a bit. Let's open up uh, Reaper. Uh, this may mess up my recording. I'm not too sure. So it turns out Reaper will just nuke the recording. Um, it takes over the sound drivers. So there you go. Something to be aware of. Uh, but we've got the sound here. Revolver shot. And I can just add a audio stream player, not the 3D one, just the regular one. And we'll just call this shot and we'll drag in our sound. And I don't really think we need to edit anything. Oh, sounds good. Alrighty, let's get access to that here. We'll just call it shot sound. If I can get the right symbol. And uh, we'll just access to this shot. And uh, then we just need to come down here in the part where we're actually firing the gun and we'll just go shot sound dot play. That's it. That's all we have to do. And obviously there's a bunch of different um, sounds that we can add in um, for this gun, but I'll do that later. It's just a quick demonstration um, that took probably a little bit longer than normal because I was trying to you know demonstrate everything um, and also it's been a while since I've added a gun so needs to do more damage anyway that's it I am continuing to work on the multiplayer side of things right now it's coming along a little slower than I'd hoped but it's coming along and I think that's the main thing to focus on for myself. As always, if you want to follow along with my progress and keep up with what I'm doing, please remember to like and subscribe. And also don't forget that this uh, framework is available on itch.io, so you can download it and see what I'm actually doing in the code. Anyway, that's it for now. I am Isaac, I am Shaftev, and I'll see you next time. <sighs> okay. <laughs> My shirt's still be good. Oh boy. You slowly start to see my shirt get darker and darker as this goes on. I'm continuing to...